Hey, it's Chris. I've been thinking about this one for a while, right? Board Game Geeks Hotness. The hotness. The top 10 games you should know about. They do a featured one every single month, right? And everyone always kind of looks at those and goes, at least I, I do. Like, what? Why is this one, huh? Why is this still on the, this is why? And so I decided, screw that. I don't really care necessarily about other people's hotness, right? Which makes this video in and of itself a bit ironic, but we're going with it. I said, you know what? This is my hotness. This is where my head is at. Some things that, yeah, there's going to be some overlap right here, right? But there's also going to be some other stuff because screw it. It's my channel. Let's do this. So yeah, let's just start right here. Let's just start right here, right? Ah, the one people are going to be orgasming about online in a verbal diarrhea style situation here in the near future. Sleeping gods, distant skies. Everyone slobbered over the first one. I'll be frank with you. I FOMO'd this. This isn't a review copy, folks. This is my crowdfunded, paid for myself, copy that just arrived two days ago. Is it going to be my ilk? I have no idea. You know what? I've found myself trying to be more critical of these games in general. Again, not because they're bad games. You know? I am more concerned about putting games on your table in the form of recommendations that will fit you rather than is this objectively good, right? Because we've all had great games that fell flat and we've all had games that we kind of go, eh, that we love, right? There's a little known crowdfunded game called Apotheca from like 2016 or so. Can't sell it if I wanted to, don't really want to. It's like a fancy asymmetric powers tic-tac-toe three in a row, flipping over tiles. You've never heard of it, you'll never play it, you'll never wanna play it. But it's still in my collection because it just tickles my fancy in the right way. So is this thing actually going to be as good as it is supposed to be? Objectively? Objectively, probably. Subjectively? I don't know. There's another down further on this list, I'll be frank with you. I'm not sure how positive my review is going to be when it comes out. I'm not going to tell you which one that is, but you can read between the lines when we start commenting about some of these other ones upcoming. But this is going to be, a, you know, too much. This is going to be too much right now. I'm looking at this and it's going, <laughs> you can already watch a video and I just, the timing of the videos and learning to play them um, always amazes me from that side of things. But in order to keep your game on the hotness and the hype, you know, you got to have some of that too, I guess. So... I just don't know if I'm going to like some of these elements. I, I, I'll be frank with you guys. I'm not really that familiar with the first one. I'm not. I've never watched gameplay. Actually, I take that back. I watched a slight smattering of Rado's gameplay with the first one like a year or so after it came out. I have absolutely no idea if I'm going to like this one, folks. Absolutely no idea. I don't want to get rid of it. I want to find one of these that I love, but is this going to be that one? You know, if I was shaking a magic eight ball right now, it would be probably telling us that signs probably point to no, but I'm gonna throw that out there as the first one on this list. Now, I told you I was gonna go far from, you know, the hotness right now. I gotta be very careful with this one because it's one of those games where you can't, you know, cause all your stuff's gonna get shifted around. This is Tamashi. This is from like Awaken Realms Light. They changed the title, and I think it technically actually is an Awakened Realms. No, it's an Awakened Realms light game. I was right. So we'll put it on its side here for ease of me not screwing everything up in there. I'm going to make the argument here when my review comes out, slightly before, slightly after this video, you'll know, that this is probably the best Awakened Realms game out there. Top to bottom. Yeah. I'm including that one right there, too. Nemesis Lockdown. Nemesis the original, Nemesis the third. <laughs> yeah, you're probably backing on GameFound right now. But this one has stuff that a lot of the other ones don't have. I'll make the argument. It has a very, very solid, well-defined, well-refined core mechanic. 
of this manipulating tokens on the board in order to engage and enact your actions and your attacking and your buffing and all of that. It's done really freaking well. Is it perfect? No! No. No. There are way too many components. It is probably overly complex. They just couldn't take their foot off the accelerator enough on some of these areas, I think. And that's what scares me about retaliation, too. That's a whole nother... You've heard me rant elsewhere about that. But that's why, you know, I think this one has the real potential to surpass many, if not most, of the other Awakened Realms games, which, coming from light, let me be clear... Not light, but it's maybe lighter. The rule book is still bleh, but mechanics seem to actually be super sound. So this one's actually coming to retail this month. It'll actually also be making an appearance on my why you shouldn't back it or buy it at retail video. That's also going to be out. So that is number two. Now the real problem is going to be putting these down somewhere in between filmings, right? Number three just arrived also this week sen frickin jitsu i feel like i'm taking crazy pills here you know what can i just say i think this is one of the most worthless things in our hobby as a whole worthless worthless you know at least with um book covers you know hardcover books that you buy at the store that you can make the argument that those kind of protect them and they actually do some good because my kids are awful hard with books but like this isn't even easy to get back on sometimes and if you're actually playing the game and it's not just sitting on a shelf this thing is zero practicality value for me none and so i just look at this and i go this is where extra money went to mark this as an additional thing now, my additional deluxe thing comes with neoprene battle mats times two, large castle battle board times one, metal focus, kamei rings, and advantage tokens times 30. So it tells you what I get extra. But speaking of rule books, I was slightly less than pleased with as well that I've read through. And I don't know about this. This scares me. Like I had to actually watch someone else's video to learn how to play Tamashi. I have a feeling I'm gonna have to do something similar. There is so much freaking iconography and the terminology. This is a game right now, I feel like, not having played it, I'll be completely honest, not having played it. The rule book reads like they said, let's invent terms for terms that are already well-defined within this genre, if you know what I mean, right? Those deck builders that are like, let's design a new term for tapping the card, <laughs> right? Let's design a new term for the discard pile. Like, why? Why? Don't reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. And there's a lot of stuff going on with this. And I fear this is going to be a swing and a miss. Now, I'm being literal there, not metaphorical. Because if you're not familiar with this, you're basically taking your Yomis and your Exceeds, your head-to-heads, if you will. And instead of having this straight line where you can't strafe or miss them, you just either run into them or run past them or stop just short of each other, right? This takes a 3D grid element of things and an initiative system, which again, there's a lot of countering and countering back and forth even once or twice. And I worry that again, it takes away the simplicity of what makes some of those games great, right? Like, you know, you can make the argument with Exceed. There's like four or five different ways to use one single card, but they're all self-explanatory on one card. You don't have to remember that they're gonna counter to your counter on the rebound of your counter. Now I'm being a little facetious there, but that's what I worry about with this one. And the miniatures, not necessarily what I'm looking for in miniatures there. They remind me a little bit more of Lucky Ducks and less like Simons. And if you know, you know. But that's why it's number three. Number four, truth be told, your mileage is going to vary here. Um, components are all spilling out. I forking hate it when you do inserts and the components spill out if I tilt it up, folks. It's not a well-designed insert. I'm sorry. Speaking of miniatures that are just like Lucky Duck and, um, you know, those and not seem on Awakened Realms level, this. This doesn't need miniatures. The bad guy, really good miniature. The other ones, I mean, they're like, the wee little one's new and you can't make out any of the markings. It just irritates me. Because, again, you know what? It's this all over again. Is this going to be great? I don't know. My kid is super interested in playing this because I actually ended up trading away 
a copy of the Star Wars Duels, uh, you know, a couple years ago. And he really liked it. I mean, it was okay. And this is just better, right? So we haven't had a chance to fully explore the depth of the head-to-head, -head, let alone the cooperative here. And so I want to like this. I traded for this. This is a deluxe version. This has the miniatures. This has the extra little token enemy guys, all that stuff. But I don't know. I don't know. Because I got rid of the first one for a reason. It was okay. It was okay. I just literally posted, like, across the internet uh, a couple places, my getting rid of lists. Basically, I said, okay, here's the lowest price online. Take $10 off of that or 50% of the, you know, overall price and trying to sell stuff. So it blew up because I priced stuff well. That's how you know. You get, like, 10 messages within the first, like, five hours. That's how you know you price stuff and you're actually getting rid of stuff that people want. Because, one... If you're selling five to ten dollars below what the price is online, no one's gonna buy that unless it's really hard to get or out of print or rare or difficult or in between or super super hot hyped, or shipping's gonna kill it, or nobody wants your stuff that nobody wants, right? Like, I don't want your three copies of Catan and two copies of Munchkin for my copy of you know any of these, right? So, is this one gonna stand the test of time? I hope so. Because I've ended up with, a, you know, about three other boxes of Unmatched in recent trades. And so if it does, it's going to be a smash hit. We're going to play it a ton. If it doesn't, well, you've had those games too. So we'll, we'll talk about where that one's going to go in a couple months probably. Next up, we're going to cross over here with the hotness. Again, I actually got a review copy. Stone Mayer sent me this copy, although it was like half punched. And it's got a big like tarot here on the side. So, you know, in case you think your reviewers are getting all the hotness right here, you can kind of see... That should not be visible right there, right? You see that right there where my thumb is right there? Yeah. So Apiary. Um, this one's going to be tried out at game night tomorrow night. This is first printing number 6,769 of 25,000. Asymmetric factions. Sort of pseudo worker placement-esque light. I mean, yeah. I'm not kidding. It's not really punched out. Like people are like, Chris, you're probably just saying that. No, no, I'm not, folks. I'm, I'm not. It's, it's just not. So um, we're going to see. Whoops. Half punched out right there. And I don't know. Uh, my review of Expeditions and this hopefully will be out before the end of the month. Expeditions is good. It's good. It's good. I said in my why you shouldn't back it at retail. I said in my why you shouldn't buy it at retail video from, I don't know, it was November or October. It, it's about a third bigger than it needs to be. And so it takes up way too much table space. And and that sounds like a trifling, sort of trite, very uh, superficial complaint. But when that complicates all of the actions, when it makes it harder for you just to reach across, when it makes it harder for you to just configure things as a whole, it makes setup and tear down longer, you know, speaking of one that may or may not show up later on this list, depending on how many we go through and depending on uh, how long this video runs, uh, that's a big barrier to entry nowadays, folks. It is. Truth be told, big barrier to entry. You're lying, or you're single, if that isn't for you. So, you know, space bees in space? Yeah, I'm intrigued. I'm really freaking intrigued. When Jamie sent the email to me and said, hey, do you want to, you know, review copies? I said, yeah, I want to try this out. Will this be my favorite Stonemeyer game ever? I'm still looking for one. Expeditions is, you know, probably at the top of that list right now, but still, I'm looking for the one that makes me go, wow, right? Wow. We want wow nowadays. And I've heard one or two people say that this is going to be in their top 10. Just truth be told right there. We're going to put it on this side because we're running out of room down below. Now, this is the other one. It caused some kerfuffle. I talked about it once in one of the news videos. And this is the new one from CMYK. Now, this is not... We'll see, though. We'll see. You see Lacuna sitting back there? That is definitely going to be in the top 10 games of the year. Daybreak here, also on game night tomorrow night after me filming this, we're going to see. Now, the controversy with this one was, if you're looking closely here, you can see at home. Maybe you can't. You see this right here? You see that? This is tape. This is cut. See, this is tape. This is not cut. You see, this is tape. This is cut, and the box is completely ripped. You see, this is tape, completely ripped. You want to see the inside? Yeah, it's damaged too. Uh, you know, somehow they shipped out a bunch of these, mostly to North America, 
And, you know, I'm not blaming CMYK, but someone's due diligence and someone's ball got completely dropped here. Just They got just a damaged, incredibly damaged, the inside too. And so, like, I was like the second or third person to post on the backer kit page. And then like a dozen plus came in within like the next couple hours after it. Because I think everyone was kind of like, nah, it's just me. It's just me. And then like, I went to the page and I saw someone else. And I was like, hey, me too. And then they're like, Bleh. But this is like pandemic, pandemic, only, you know, real world pandemic, like the world is heating up, global warming is happening, and you have to try and mitigate it and stop it from happening. Good luck. Hope it crosses over to the real world, right? But this has real potential. Now, I've heard it runs a little bit long. That's my biggest concern, because it says 60 to 90 here, and I've heard people saying mm, two hours ish. So... If it doesn't go two hours, or it makes the two hours feel like an hour, fantastic. But I won't lie, I probably overspent on this one. This was probably one that you're going to get at retail for less. And if it's not very good, <laughs> I'm going to be out a lot. But I said, screw it. This was one of those that I just said, you know what? I'm going to put my money where my mouth is with the indie publisher, and we're going to try it. We're going to see. This is a hard cooperative. You know me, I'm a hard co-op fan. I am. And so I would be lying to you if this wasn't on the short list of things to play right now. In fact, this is higher than everything else on the list to play right now that I've already mentioned or gone through in this video. That tells you how much of a fan of this I am in the first place. So what else we got? Well, the solo game that I think is better than Too Many Bones. So what else we got? Well, we have the solo game that I think is better than 20 Strong. And this is actually called Kingfire Delve, Vainglory's Grotto. Yeah, they sent me a review copy. Nah, so what? Yeah, I bought 20 strong with my own money. Uh, uh, I don't, uh, I'll tell you, does it really matter? No. This is a one, you can play it with two. It's a better solo. It's card driven with dice. And you're going to look at that and you're going to go, well, that sounds stupid, Chris. Well, actually... There's a lot more nuance. It's very difficult, folks. I barely eked out my first game. And I basically lucked into it just, just by the seat of my pants on fire. And yeah, I said that. I'm leaving that in there. I left it in purpose because, you know what? Legisms. Deal with them. You know, if you like my channel, you like it. If you don't, well, you're probably not subscribed in the first place. But it's got this interesting tableau system. You've got this hand of an asymmetric character. And you're drawing cards and you're playing them for their ability or their value, but the dice are going to have just a couple sides on them. They're gonna give you just one additional point to this potential uh, smattering surrounding because you've got a central bad guy card and then four cards around it orthogonally. And you're trying to mitigate them and knock them out to burn through the bad guy deck. And only when you burn through the bad guy deck can you actually attack the main one. But then the main one has four buffers around it that get put out separately again, which are gonna mitigate things even more frustratingly so. But it was, you know, I'll, I'll say this. It was Kevin Wilson. I didn't realize it was Kevin Wilson. The one thing that separated this from 20 Strong for me, I had fun with this. That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. Speaking, though, of oh, solos, WizKids just sent me this. <laughs> I have had this transparency with you guys on my wish list pretty much almost since I got into the hobby, folks. As weird as that sounds, this is the game that I always looked at and I always said, that is the ideal board game of what I think of card driven combo action management with a fantasy over theme, becoming overpowered and blasting enemies and creatures, trying to get strong enough to level up DBZ style by the end of the game. Yeah, he threw an over 9,000 reference in there too. And I would argue that this is the ultimate, you should not have to Learn a game by a video game. That makes sense there with the hyphens and the pauses. All other games are secondary to this because everyone's like, Ricky Royal, go watch his video and that's how to play it. <laughs> with like the 37th smattering reprinting of this thing, um, the rule book, I, you know, would, you would hope would be rearranged so that you could just learn it that way. But I don't have high hopes for that. But as a perpetual nominee for one of the best solo games ever, and I'm not sure I would ever play it with two, but I'm, you know, again, you know, just with Kinfire there, 
the mention, the throwing around of the 20 strong. I'm okay. I want to dabble in those things. You know, everybody has their niche nowadays, but I think you need to explore what else makes you tick too. I didn't like worker placement at all. I kind of like dice worker placement now. I've never really gotten into the solo side of things. I see the enjoyment of it. I just played Marvel United two-handed tonight. That's up next, actually. And so I went into this and I said, you know what? We're going to see how this goes. I have no idea what includes revised figures and paint schemes means, but we're going to explore and we're going to go to the depths of things too. So that is also on the short list. So speaking of that, well, we'll, we'll skip the top one over here on this side and we'll go below because I, I preluded it, right? Marvel United spider Geddon. I picked it off of Amazon. I could not do it. You know me, I've pretty much had everything Marvel United in my collection at some point or time or another. I've sold a bunch of it. I've kept a bunch of it. I've got all of season three coming to me. I went all in on that. That was probably a mistake. I'll probably sell a bunch more of that off once I play through it a little bit. But this is Spider Geddon. This is the one that was supposed to come out like in the summer, but never did. And it hasn't really made any release news. Like Simon didn't even blog, publish, post it. I'll make the argument though. Well, I'll make a semi argument. <laughs> Had another weird, not so uh, work appropriate reference there I was gonna make. Um, that this is maybe the one core box. If you haven't picked up Marvel United at all, if you have not looked into Marvel United at all and you're going, Chris, what is the great appeal about this super easy, cooperative Marvel theme thing? Well, one, you get your spider heroes, which are freaking cool. Two, it takes all of the improvements for the core box of X-Men and adds all of the core improvements from season three. You have items in here. You have more asymmetry between the enemies. You have both the heroes and the anti-heroes or the, you know, the ones that you can play as good guys or bad guys, which gives this box actually... If you look on the back here, it gives you six heroes that you can play with, two soul villains only, and two either anythings. So a total of eight heroes potentially, and four bad guys. Four bad guys in one box that are actually asymmetrically freaking unique is really good. Now the one downside I, I've seen, just playing it a little bit so far, I've only got like three plays under my belt, but the spider folks, if you pick the wrong spider folks against the wrong spider enemies, like your strategy just falls flat. <laughs> so that is probably a little bit more so present in this one, but I'll make the argument that this is a great place to start if you're looking for something. It's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive though. If you're gonna pay for the spider IP with the latest Spider-Man game and the Spider-Man movies, you know, playing a little bit off of that hotness. So um, am I gonna keep it right now? Yeah, right now. We're probably gonna keep it until season three shows up and then we're gonna start ranking things again. And I'm gonna give you my full complete rankings of Marvel United again, because I know people love that. Nobody watched it, I don't care. I love this game. Screw the hotness. That's why I'm doing this video in the first place, right? Next up, I alluded to this a little earlier. If you can figure out what those comments were, great. If you can't, well, you skip that part of the video and you should probably go back and check it out. Maple frickin' Valley. You know, I didn't realize this until actually after I played it. It actually says Creature Comforts Maple, Maple Valley. So not having played Creature Comforts, that means nothing to me. It reminds me more of Cascadia recently, which was on my news video from a week or two ago, where they said, Cascadia rolling rights, Cascadia rolling rights. And it was more like, okay, Cascadia the franchise. And that's kind of what I think we've got going on here. Not that you need to have any knowledge of this one in the previous one, but I'm assuming that this is a location within this one, just based off that assumption. Whatever, right? Doesn't affect my enjoyment of it either way. I'll say though, 11 different types of resources in the base game alone, that's a lot of resources, folks. That's a lot of different types of resources. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. The mini expansion adds another type. So you're looking at 12 different resource types that you are trying to navigate, manage, mitigate, and deal with randomness of the board as they're laid out there of where you can gather them. This one's gonna be an interesting review. This one's probably gonna be the nearest or the soonest review of all of these. Maybe Spider Geddon, that one's, that one's gonna be good too, but that's where I'm going with this. And again, crowdfunding backer here. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep it yet at this point. Now that's not gonna affect my review, you know, the pluses and minus, I'm gonna say either way, but we got to try it out with the kids first, I think. Because 
it is marked as kiddish with 11 different resources i'm not sure i'm not sure this is as kid friendly as the appeal aesthetically might indicate otherwise it's a feldian point buffet not in the ways you can score points totally but in the ways you're going to have to manage all of the different things that you're given so we'll see we'll see i i i don't know yet i just don't know hate this i'm not kidding about this folks like i'm trying to get this thing on right now and this is just a real pain like come on okay camera magic let's do you know what let's do dune imperium first dune imperium uprising you can see stone shrink you know not gonna try and take the shrink off to fool you that i played it stone shrink am i gonna like it i love dune imperium i have both the expansions i'm never gonna buy those upgrades folks but do you need this one my precious I don't know. I'm going to say no. I think this is going to be just like Nemesis Lockdown, Nemesis, Nemesis Retaliation. You're going to find your flavor. You're going to stick with it. And it's going to suit your needs. And I'm going to make the argument that if you're like me and somehow you already have both copies, inevitably you're going to get rid of one. And I hate, I hate that. I don't buy things to replace other things in my collection, right? Not not what i do is this one gonna climb up the charts faster is faster than dune like dune is like what like 10 or something right now board game geek i don't really pay attention to that stuff but is it deserving of that i mean there are channels that put out hundreds and thousands of views just on this alone mr beast all over this thing so yeah if you're a hardcore and yeah you're gonna go over this but if you're not a hardcore and go for the base game on you know cheap people selling it secondary market wise and Get your expansions along with it for cheaper than the base game would new at retail. That's what you do. Jury's still out otherwise. So last up, Among Cultists. They sent me this one. Um, again, Shrink. About to come off, actually, tomorrow. And Social Deduction, four to eight players. It's a longer werewolf with more deductive elements. Um, I've seen split mixed opinion on it online so far. And I don't really pay attention to much of that, but... It's, it's interesting, right? This is marketed as, you know, the next big thing. This is a marketed, you know, sort of like the blood on the clock tower light, if you will, in a different way. And I'm not going to make that straight comparison. I'm not saying they're alike in any way, shape, or form necessarily, but the vibe in general. And it came with two expansions. And there's a reprint and another expansion coming out to crowdfunding in the near future here in the next month or two, I think. So, I mean, the aesthetic is freaking awesome. But is the gameplay going to hold up? And again, with something like this, right? Like when I think of the other uh, deductive games in my collection or that have passed through my collection, because I only own like two or three other ones, I look at them and I go, the box size for like Quest Avalon, right? It's like this. Coup, you know, again, deduction, deduction, right? Uh, deduction Murder in Hong Kong. I mean, it's a regular box, but it's like, and I'm looking at this one and this is, uh, you know, a big box. And it's got two other boxes that almost make up probably two thirds of this size as well on top of that. And so it's a lot of stuff. And the one thing I'll say, the commonality between all the other games that are sort of in this genre is there is often a lack of stuff. No one has said to me before, okay, Chris, that deduction game didn't have enough components, right? That's what I worry about with something like this. Components translate into better gameplay? No. If you have more components, though, can it? Sure. Not going to rule it out. But, you know, that's why we got to figure this one out. And that's why I'm going to see where this one goes. I'm open to this. Again, a, a gaping hole in my collection. I'm willing to fill and be open-minded about. But I don't know. I don't know. So we're going to see. Because the other thing I worry about in a game like this, right? You play it with four, great. If you play it with eight and it takes twice as long, so there you go. So there you go. That is 10 if I counted correctly. And screw everybody else's. <laughs> just kidding. Um, I just thought it would be something slightly different. Like, what is Chris actually playing? Where are things at with what Chris has got going on? Some new, some not as new, some brand spanking new all over the place, but also not the ones that you're necessarily going to always see on the hotness in the first place. So there you go. That's all I got. Let me know what you think. Which one of these do you think I'm going to like the best? Which one of these do you go, Chris, you're going to hate that game.
I'm hoping it's not Mage Knight. I really want to like that game. I'm worried, though. I'm a little bit trepidatious. That's your vocabulary word of the day. Trepidatious. Tree are... I can't pronounce things. Video's time to be over. Boom! Not editing that out, because that's what you get from Legion Games sitting in 9K. <laughs> Have a great day. Stay classy. Stay classier than me at the end of this video. Apparently, I'm just like aphasic and having a stroke. Anyway, peace out. Thanks for watching.